Water was just an element. Nevertheless, it was this H2O. I'm sorry? This isn't so, true. That water has not always been H2O? Yeah. All you have to do is cross the Mexican border. And over there, it's aqua. <laughs> Look at his face. Do you not think water is H2O? But I think we've come up with a term to describe what we refer to as water. There okay, are, of I'm course, not, other cultures. I, that I agree with you. We came up with a term to talk about water. And that term right. is water. So you're resisting me on the claim that water is H2O. Um, let me try a different one. How I'm about, resisting you on definitional prescriptivism. I think that we have... Uh, I'm not I prescribing think that, any definitions. I'm just saying water is H2O, true or false. And it sounds like you're reluctant to say true. We're reviewing Vosh versus Dr. Thomas Bogardus. That's a pretty, oh cool, that's a pretty that good true. name, huh? Bogardus. Okay, so let's just watch. He's a philosophy things. professor, and we're skipping to. Is he a professor? I think he is. Yeah. Okay. I think he's a philosophy teacher. I didn't know that. Which is interesting. Yeah. I saw. I watched part of Destiny reviewing this, and it was. I mean, it's pretty fun. <laughs> I mean, mm -hmm. Yeah, he's an associate professor of philosophy. The hu the go. hubris of Vosh. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of legendary, it really, is at this point. Okay. Well, Vosh is like the kind of guy who he's got like a big exam, his big philosophy exam. And right. He hasn't read. He's any just going to wing background. it. Yeah, he hasn't read any of the research or any of the pay or any textbook or any of the papers that he has to. And he just kind of rolls out of bed and he's just like, I could just bullshit on this test, and I'll be fine. So I was working on the comic while I was listening to this, so I didn't see any of the screen stuff here. But obvious. Look, he's got. All trans women are women. He's got like the logic proposition here. Yes. All the 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 claim trees here. Biological view, social view, self ID view. Which is, I mean, this is so helpful being able to identify which of these perspectives. So he's like, which way are you going, Vosh? Are you you going down the bio? No, the social. Okay, the social view. So let's see here. Right. All trans women are women. Okay. This is what I this is what I was trying to say, but he was like, "You can't you can't say this. You can't say all trans women aren't women anymore." I mean, that's are not like, women. Yeah. yeah, but he's he is saying that not actually being rich, and so on. And this just holds generally for every feature, any property you choose, any feature you choose. Um, and so, what that means, what one and two entail here, is on this view, the phrase "being a woman" doesn't refer to anything because there's no feature that answers to this definition. There's no such thing. And so um, a kind of surprising result is on this view, it looks like there are no women and there are no trans women, therefore. And for our purposes, what follows is um, it's false that all trans women are women, or at least it's not true. Um, in fact, look why is the, I never watched this, I only listened to it. Why is the picture like zoomed in and fucked up? I don't know. I blame okay. James. I, I blame James. Yeah. What's going on here? So have just you seen a, James' badass beard? He looks so cool. I have. He looks like um, Lincoln. Yeah, there you go. Uh, <laughs> to to consolidate because we kind of started in the middle of this for the chat. His argument, which is a very interesting argument, which I never thought of, which is that since Vosh kind of takes this uh, argument where no one can really classify what it means to be a woman. Vosh is essentially saying that there's no such thing as a woman. Therefore, Vosh cannot say that trans women are women. Right. Which is like, oh, that's I had never thought about that, but that's very true. Yes. So, so he forces him into the position where he has to take the evil claim. Right. I mean, Vosh obviously refuses to take that position. Of course. But, yeah. He's like, this is a religious position that I have here. Why would I... <laughs> You can't argue me out of this. Have you heard of Agua? <laughs> Looks like none are, because there are no women at all. Okay, um, here's a couple other views. I think those are sort of the big three, but here are some other views that have been discussed um, by Vosh. One is gender abolition. On this view, ideally, there are no genders. So ideally, women don't exist. Here's Vosh expressing that sort of view. I think gender is a destructive concept, he says. So eventually, I want it gone. Look how much, look how much work that 
Dr. Tom has done for this. I know. He dug up all his quotes. He did all his charts. Vash just like rolls out of bed and like licks his hair. And he's like, a eh, bit of bullshit. It's like, it's just so disgusting. It is. I think I was so enraged listening to this debate because he's so bad faith. So horrendously bad faith when Dr. Tom does like all this work and lays everything out so nice and clear. Right. The whole goal of sophistry is just to destroy people's time. It's yes. to make well, them it's, spend time doing this nonsense. Right. It's to obfus- obfuscate. Obfuscate. Tr- Come on, look obfuscate. how. Obfuscate. Look, you I'm can never like, say that word. Obfuscate. Look, I'm a obfuscate. pro now. There you go. <laughs> it's to ob- obfuscate the truth and to muddle everything up. Yes. Yeah. Sally has an inclusive philosopher at MIT who says something similar. She adopted a social role view. She thought to be a woman is to be oppressed. So she says a main um, part of the project of feminism is to eliminate women, <laughs> which sounds kind of surprising, um, but that was her view. So um, I think we can at least agree that on this view, if you ask um, how things should be ideally, um, they would say ideally uh, there are no women at all. And they would say ideally there are no trans women. Look at that. He catches him in a contradiction. He says, listen, you're a gender abolitionist, Vosh. But if you are a true gender <laughs> abolitionist, you can't say what you're saying. Right. Uh, so well, that's... A well, there's a, there's a problem here, in- which is what uh, James Lindsay talks about a lot. He's, he talks about with a lot of these critical theories and especially uh, queer uh, theories, the goal is just to deconstruct all normative claims and values about yes. society and so since that's the goal they don't intentionally they don't care about being consistent because they're not coming from a, a position of like ideological consistency or fundamental principles beyond you know deconstruction and revolution so they can do whatever you know they can feel justified in doing whatever rhetorical tricks that they want to just get to get what they want and i think yeah. that's kind of how Vosh views it when he calls himself like you know a consequentialist or whatever because he's like well as long as society as long as whatever bullshit arguments i'm making get me to the society i want to make that's all that matters right yeah the society where he has a big fat bank account and everyone loves him <laughs> right i mean yeah, the society I where he's at the top of the status hierarchy right right i mean this is Vosh has decided you know there's a lot of power in this church of wokeness I want to be a priest there. <laughs> That's what he's doing. Yes, yes. A lot of people do this. Location of that view. Here's another one, which I think Vosh might want to defend today. He says um, in his opening statements that he says prescriptively trans women are women. So that's another view that I've heard expressed in his videos. Um, on this view, when you say trans women are women, um, what you're actually doing is giving a kind of command or prescription. You're saying you should speak and act as though trans women or women is literally true. You should speak and act as though trans women or women is literally true. And if you ask why, as Vosh said in his opening statement, it's justified by utility, by good consequences, by benefits. That's a more, that's a metaphorical truth position right there. Perfectly mm-hmm. stated. Yes. Um, so here's a statement of Vosh uh, sort of expressing that. So he says, um, what people mean when they say they're women is Woman is a social category I'd like to be a part of. I want to think of myself as, a, as part of it and be thought of as part of it. Um, Tally May Betcher, a trans philosopher, says something similar. In trans inclusive and queer communities, gender presentation indicates how you want to be treated. So if you think that we should treat people how they want to be treated, then when you say trans women are women, what you might be communicating is we should treat people how they want to be treated. We should treat trans women how they want to be treated. Okay, and again, it's justified by utility. So I'll just point out with respect to the prescriptive claim, whether this is something we should do, something that doesn't seem to enter into um, everybody's moral calculations is whether or not what we're saying is true. 60 60 seconds uh, left. 60 seconds left. Okay, and given what I've said so far, it looks like this statement, trans women are women, is uh, literally not true. And so we can at least agree on that. If we asked this prescriptivist view, strictly speaking, literally, are all trans women women? I think, given what we've said, the view has to agree with, has to say no. Okay, let's see if I can fit this in. I ran out of space on my slide, but sometimes Vosh seems to be a nihilist or an anti-realist about gender. Um, Sometimes he says gender concepts are arbitrary social designations, and in reality, there are no men, no women, etc. Here's a quotation from Vosh back in 2019 saying, 
all categories are socially constructed. They don't exist in nature. We built them. So if you hold that view and then you ask, well, really, literally, um, are all trans women women? I think the view has to say no, in reality, no. Okay, so I tried to show that. So there's some sophistry that goes on here. I've never heard anyone address this whenever someone brings up the social construct thing. There's more than one type of social construct. Okay. okay. There's soft social constructs and there's hard social constructs. A, so a, a hard social construct is a social, like, so like, yes, it's technically true that all categories are created by human beings. Like, you know, if you cut open a, like a bear, there's nothing in it that said, there's no, like God did not stitch in the universe, did not stitch the words like mammal into the bear's right, flesh. Totally. Right. Yeah. Um, so, but the classification of like mammal is a hard social construct. And it's called that because the category, despite being created by people, is based on like a, something that they call a brute fact, a fact about nature. Really? It's not okay. constructed. Yes. So like, you know, the decision to categorize things as mammals, you know, based on whether they, you know, generally, except for obviously platypuses with one exception, you know, whether they have live young, whether they, you know, have breast tissue that they feed the babies, you know, blah, 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 blah. That's a hard social construct. It's based on some kind of brute fact. A soft social construct is something that's not based on a, on a hard brute fact. It's something that is sort of based on some more arbitrary social like uh, language. distinction. Um, or that women like the color pink. Yeah, like the color, you know, like women having pink, you know, liking pink, boys liking blue, assuming there's no studies in that uh, physically with their eyes or anything, then yeah, it'd be more like a soft social construct. And what's really happening with Vosh and a lot of the under, other gender abolitionists is that they want to transform gender from a hard social construct into a soft social construct. And they kind of leave that part of the argument out of it even though that's really the crux of what's going on. Right. You Just so they can kind of, uh, you know, hide the ball a little bit. Right. Yeah. Well, he eviscerates him with the water example. Right. The statement trans women are women is not true on every view we've looked at, including five from Bosch. Thank you for your attention. <laughs> <laughs> Destroyed. <laughs> Destroy. Thank you very much for that opening. And with that, we're going to jump into open conversation. Want to say, folks, thrilled to let you know we have a lot of upcoming debates. You don't want to miss them. So, for example, just confirmed today at the Tuesday, you don't mind after that if I take a moment to respond to your premises, as I have plenty to say, as we, as we, it seems we both do. So the issue I have here is that every, um, I feel as though you've misrepresented some of my views and definitions here. And what's more, all of these views are incoherent. The, the construct I often find <laughs> is that people will treat- Look, you've misrepresented my incoherent, what's he saying here, Sitch? I don't necessarily know. You no, know, he's saying, he's saying you straw manned me. And then on top of that, your arguments are incoherent. So I'm just- It sounded like know. he said his arguments were incoherent. But no, they were straw man no. versions of his yeah. argument, so he's going to fix it. Right. Right. The biological view, as though because it's the traditionally accepted one, it's the coherent one. But in reality, it's nothing but. There's a reason why nature, the arguably one of the most respected scientific journals in the history of the species, um, has been putting out article after op-ed about how um, the idea that sex and gender are the same or that gender should be considered an extension of a biological category is ahistorical, ascientific, and just false. Fosh says this all the time, and it it's so pathetically lame and gross which is he doesn't even cite like he's not even citing like this specific article that you could check right yeah. he just says like oh well this publication yeah. put out a bunch of articles about this but like w okay like what does that mean <laughs> like, yeah so, thank goodness we can okay. go through the entire history right. of nature and find exactly what he's talking about yeah right give me something specific that we can look at and see what their arguments about you know he's, before you make this uh, fallacious appeal to authority he's bullshitting He's yes. totally bullshitting. Right. And the reason for that is because what you obfuscate when you refer to the biological... It's obfuscate. Come on, say it right. <laughs> Fuck, Bosh. Listen, listen. 
Listen. Off this skate, off this skate. No, off you skate. Okay, come on. Okay. Logical we sex can't. version of gender is the literal millennia of arguments and inconsistencies over what exactly it means to draw that line. Of course, for most of also, I just want to, I don't when he says that like for thousands of years humans didn't classify gender and sex as being the same. I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. For thousands of years, like gender is a very, very, very new concept. Yes. In human history. That's only been around for like 50 to 60 ish years. Before yes. that, there was never thought of a distinction between sex and gender. Ever. Yes. Yeah. In like every human culture, they always thought that sex and gender were literally the same thing. So I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. This is why Matt Walsh did go to Africa and, and hang out with yes. the tribesmen just right. to show their concept of this sex and gender. Sure. So when people like sure. Vosh go, oh, this is something. You know, ancient history is on our side. You can yeah, go, it's like, yeah, get the fuck out of here. What are I you don't talking know what about? What you're talking about, right? Yeah. Well, and also that's just even if that was the case, even if there were societies that did separate them, that doesn't. I mean, there are societies that ate people. Like I don't know. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> what kind of argument is that? societies that cut out people's hearts and sacrificed them to the, the right. god of the like, okay the coming harvest? Yeah. Exactly human's history we have no idea what chromosomes or even hormone washes are so only recently has a full understanding of the actual things that differentiate biological males and females even been known to us but even leaving that aside long standing have been the practices of intersex people having their genitals mutilated by doctors who want and I, I imagine okay i know we're pausing it so much but it's like, i know you gotta let him get his argument out but he everything he's saying is is crazy yeah because it's like from a biological perspective the the only point of living, the only point of living from a purely evolutionary perspective is is just to reproduce. He's getting freaky with your your, your right. significant other. Right. It's it's literally just to reproduce and to you know care for your offspring, and so Vosh is saying that for thousands of years of all human history, we didn't know what a, we couldn't figure out the difference between a man and a woman which yeah. is the entire point of life was just for human beings to figure out that distinction so that they could reproduce. Yeah, I don't how do you how do you take this completely naive worldview and superimpose it onto biology? Like obviously there are so many species that aren't conscious but still engage in sexual reproduction. Like they don't consciously know that right. that uh you know they're going to die one day. <laughs> they don't right. have cultures, but they still know uh, male and female. They still manage to reproduce. <laughs> it's, it's so, so stupid. stupid. It's yeah. so stupid. Yeah. Oh. Want to get that's what part of sophistry is just needlessly complicating things. So you can hide mm -hmm. some stupid argument. You can make some stupid argument by hiding the facts or or obfuscating the facts them cleanly fit in one category or another, biologically male or biologically female, often to the psychological detriment of those people because those doctors are trying to force people into a binary construct that just doesn't work. And the existence of intersex people at all simply destroys the concept of a sex-based gender because a binary is just that, a binary. You can't have a system that you claim is coherent when it's like, well... How does intersex destroy the concept of sex-based gender when intersex is a biological phenomenon if his argument is that gender is a non-biological is a social it's a pure social construct then that doesn't make any fucking sense it doesn't it doesn't at all did you see this vocal distance thread on the trans women are women thing no i didn't there he lays out i don't know if it's a here i don't know if vocal distance is a he or she they <laughs> the only time they is actually useful they lay out a a thread on the sophistry of the these arguments and when someone brings up borderline examples or edge cases and says this example proves we don't know where the lines are the correct response is the only reason you can think up cases that blur the line is that you know exactly where the line is. Exactly, yeah. See These how are it the works? the exceptions that 
These are yeah, the exceptions that prove the rule. Exactly. Basically. So the yeah. only way, the only reason you're saying that edge, these edge cases, these intersect people are, the only reason you can call them an example is because you know that they fall outside of what? The binary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Yes. Right. The only reason they are an example is because it, you know what the fucking binary is, dude. You're just, you're just lying. You're just right. well, making shit and, up. And, I mean, they're using constantly using intersex people as a shield when most intersex people, you know, yeah, do not do want to be a shield. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they 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 want to identify as male or female. Right. You and know, live they're not normal advocating lives. to be yeah, exactly. right, non-binary. And and if they and if there's like the tiny amount of people that have intersex conditions who want to be labeled as non-binary, then like go fuck ahead. I don't care. That's fine. That that's not like all these people. That are running out here with the non-binary pronouns do not have intersex conditions, and that's bullshit. And they know it's bullshit. Yeah. Oh man. There are not ninety. I think a, most of the intersex people don't even know they're intersex because they have some kind of chromosomal difference, and, and they manifest right. as male or female. So. Yeah, like because there's there's like five or six I think uh, main intersex conditions, right? And only like a few of them. You know, would you actually know that you even have you know, right. most of the time? So yeah, nine percent of people fit to it. Well, ninety-nine percent of people leaves out millions. And what are those millions then? Aberrant counterexamples? No, the system never functioned, and it never made that much sense, and it never survived scrutiny. By the way, it's not as though medieval French peasants were undergoing significant sociological analysis of the concept of the social construction of sex. They didn't have sociology back then. It's a fairly modern <laughs> construction. When it comes to what we talk about... So what, what is he saying there? He's saying because the peasants didn't have sociology, they didn't understand sex well, and gender? Or? What, he, what he's saying is that he's accidentally contradicting his earlier statement. I feel like he did, For thousands of yeah. years, people knew the difference between sex and gender. Now he's saying, well... They didn't know the difference between sex and gender because they didn't have sociology. So, right. which imagine thinking that sociology was is the only thing that's related to figuring out the difference between sex and gender. Yeah, sociology. <laughs> I mean, so sociology may be gender roles, but not. Or there's sex there's some roles. other fields that are important, like psychology, psychiatry, biology. biology there's some other fields yeah. that you know could be a little important biology, in determining you know sex and uh, gender differences. Sure. Like with the prescription of gender and all statements of definition are prescriptive, by the way, because we do create these definitions. We didn't unearth them in stone tablets written by God. You know, we had to make efforts to understand them. Um, what we're really doing is trying to find what serves us best. Now, there is meaningful utility in understanding the difference between a biological male and a biological female. There are categorical differences that are worth respecting in a biological sense. But that doesn't encompass the wide variety of social differences between most men and most women that are largely socially ascribed. So when you have this dissonance here where so much of what it means to be a man isn't actually what it means to be biologically male in both the modern world and throughout history in many cultures, there are differences between those two things. We have an issue. What is a consistent, rigorous, 100% of the time effective, applicable mode of gender? What works? Build our definitions to serve human utility. And to that effect, uh, you call it the self-ID view. The prescriptive view I don't think is inconsistent, but I stand by this. What we mean when we say woman, a woman, is a person who chooses to adhere to a broad, constructed collection of values, aesthetics, forms, roles, and perspectives that we consider to be a part of what it means to be a woman. There is no consistency here, and you'll never find it. No more than you could find consistency in the definition of what it means to be cool. You know, find me a fine line on that. Point in the room where the cool, you know, the cool protons are, or the cool radiation. It just, it's not present, and you'll never find it. Um, but still, we have very strong ideas about what it means to be cool. And we argue, but the arguments are for a purpose. Because finding out who's cool, what's really cool, is socially useful, as is whatever definition we arrive at, which hurts the smallest number of people uh, concerning gender. And that is why I believe trans women are women, because all definitional statements are necessarily prescriptive. And as long as we are dealing with a system that is fundamentally, constructedly absurd, we should at least refer to it in ways that harm people uh, in the, uh, to, the, to the least possible extent. 
Okay. Um, so you started that by saying you were going to respond to my premises, but I'm struggling to see how any of this responded to any premise of any argument I gave. <laughs> um, so let's go through some of the things you said. Um, you said all of these views are incoherent. You said there's no coherent concept of gender. Is that is that right? Did I get you right there? You will not find me a definition of gender that is 100% consistent and all-encompassing and has no flaws in it. There are no such things. You'll, so, you, okay. you can't be found. So there's no consistent definition of gender. That's not what... I hate this. That's not what consistent definition means, okay? You, you could do that for a door, a chair, a window, a table, a car. You could do that for any object, you know, outside of like, I don't know, the the elements on the periodic table or something that has some like incredibly precise uh, measurement yes or ca or classification that's not categories work by people create like a broad criteria of uh descriptions and then if something fits you know if something has enough of these things then they fit in that category but not everything has all the categories i mean that's why you have you know we consider a a revolving door and a door that's like a normal open up door, they're both, they're still doors, even though they look very different and they function very differently. They're still considered doors. Yeah. You know, if, if you take a door and you rip it off its hinges and you throw it on the ground so it no longer functions, it's still a door and people still recognize it as a door. And five year old children understand this concept intrinsically. And we couldn't have a society, like imagine how idiotically stupid language would be if we had to have a word. If every category had to have this exact perfect like encompassment of every possible thing, because then we'd have to have thousands and thousands and thousands of different words all to describe basically the same thing. Right. Like it's so stupid. We're the Eskimos with water or, yeah, or, or snow. snow. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> the, I'm just going to memorize this. This is so beautiful. The only reason you can think up cases that blur the line is because you know right exactly where the line is you're all you're yep. doing is you're 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 imagining a case that is really close to the edge of the line <laughs> that's all you're right. doing you're well, playing this game it's 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 an actual fallacy it's a sorties paradox the continuum fallacy and it's oh. based on the guy basically the guy said like if we have a heap of sand oh yeah when does it become a heap yeah yeah like if i keep taking individual grains out at right. what point does it cease to be a heap? Right. And it's yes. like, well, there's no, and it's it's actually interesting because Vanche and all the other uh, people making this argument, they're making the exact same argument the creationists were making because the creationists would say, they would say, you know, whenever they talk to Richard Dawkins or something, they'd say, look, point to me in the fossil record, point to me the exact, you know, time right. that, a, that a monkey became a man. Right. And yes. then, you know, they would be like, well, that's not really possible because it's not like, Evolution doesn't work by a monkey one day gives birth to a human being. It's like very slow changes over millions of years. And so when exactly is the cutoff point is not, you know, it's, it's like you have like a spectrum of monkey to madness. And obviously these two categories exist and they're different. And just because you can't point to the exact spots where you think the change occurs doesn't mean that the two categories don't exist. But it would be cool to see like a chimpanzee with a human baby, like holding a human baby. <laughs> It'd be pretty creepy. Can you imagine? It'd be pretty creepy. Like a chimpanzee had a, there was, there, there is a big jump in chimpanzees though, because chimpanzees have a, humans, one of the chromosomes in chimpanzees fused to form humans. Chimpanzees have one more chromosome than human beings. Right. Which is kind of, I mean, that's kind of a big jump, don't you think? Like a, a whole yeah, chromosome but we, but fuses. It's it's not likely that like a single uh, person was born with this fused chromosome and was just radically different. I'm gonna go with the chimpanzee with the holding the human baby. <laughs> you just you just want this stupid the human image. baby. Because how well, hold it, on, how does that yeah. even work? Like the chromosome fuses, mm -hmm. and then how does that that obviously that fuse of the chromosome went on to reproduce because well i don't know enough about genetics i don't know if it's like one baby was born with the fused chromosome or if it's like the chromosomes over time like 
you know, become shorter or start fusing together slowly, you know, generation, generation. This is a mystery what? for evolution. One that I'm, I'm not sure. I don't know. The I'm answer obviously question. keeping my but, eye on because I want to know what the he fuck wants happened to here. The human baby. But like, and another example, which they gets brought up in this conversation, though, they don't talk about this specifically is, is the color spectrum. It's like oh, every oh. person with eyeballs, you know, they can say, okay, this is red and this is orange. And we, we see that these are different colors, right? We, we recognize that they're different colors. But when exactly on the light spectrum does red become orange and orange become red if you were to zoom in and look at each like pixel of color? Like, I don't fucking know. Who knows? That's a subjective, that's probably a subjective question. There's not like a clear answer. That doesn't mean that red, the color red and the color orange don't exist. I just think it's funny that the, that Vosh is in the creationist position. Of course. And he's now they're debating literal creationists. I think Matt. Yes. yes. Isn't Matt. I, I don't think Matt Walsh is a creationist, actually. I, Matt Walsh uh, does believe that's in evolution. That's a good evolution, question. So. Does Matt Walsh believe in evolution? Matt Walsh de definitely believes in evolution. I looked it up. Oh, okay. But anyway. Hit it up. So no matter who I asked, if I asked anybody, what is a woman? No matter what they say. Um, you think there's going to be some sort of impossibility or contradiction or inconsistency. You will always be able to find a hole or an exception. Whether they oh. take a biological or a self-ID, a social okay. role or an abolitionist perspective, there will always yeah. be... Well, gender abolition is a prescription, not a description of current gender states. But yeah. no matter what a person's definition of a woman is, there is always going to be something you can pin them on. Okay, so then it sounds like your view entails there are no women. Because there's no true definition of woman. No, not right? at all. There are plenty of social constructions that I think have meaning and serve utility, even if there are no consistencies to it. I think cool people exist, but I don't think I could ever find a single definition of cool that is perfectly delineates in all cat like categories and situations right. between cool and uncool people. Okay, so you said the concepts are incoherent and inconsistent, but I think what you just mean is... See, but wait, he just contradicted himself, because he just said, I think cool people exist, but I couldn't find some magical universal definition of it. Right. Well, it's like, okay, but... So you still recognize that like the category of cool exist. I mean, that's like a super soft social construct because different people classify different people as cool. Right. Yes, definitely. And you can't, I mean, compare that to a hard social construct like man and woman is right. Ridiculous, but. Napoleon dynamite is cool. Yeah, there you go. And this is all just, this is so stupid because this is all just an argument over it's, it's nothing to do with like Dr. Uh, Tom isn't saying, you know, I hate trans people. He's not saying that they shouldn't be able to, you know, transition or anything like that. All he's saying is like they have there. It's a different category. A trans woman and a woman is a different category. That's literally the only argument being put forward. <laughs> that that's, yeah. that Vosh is such a problem. with. Trans women are trans women, though. Just bugs the shit out of people. They don't want they don't want to hear that. They're yeah. Like, fuck you. How dare you deny my reality? <laughs> is perhaps vague, so allow for borderline cases, or difficult to articulate. I think maybe that's what you mean when you say all definitions are incoherent and inconsistent, all definitions of gender anyway. I think what you mean is they allow for borderline cases. They'll be vague in various ways. Um, and what was the second thing I said? Vague in various ways. And hard to articulate, difficult to articulate. It'll be hard to come up with or express or verbalize a definition that includes everyone who should be included and excludes everyone who should be excluded. So that's the view. I guess I would agree with that. Yeah, definitions are hard to come by, typically. Um, and most of them, especially in biology, are vague and admit of borderline cases. But nevertheless, they may be true. <laughs> um, there may be true definitions, even if they're difficult to express or articulate. You gave the example, one of your arguments against the biological definition of uh, woman was that we didn't know about chromosomes many years ago. Well, first of all, I don't think biological sex is defined in terms of chromosomes, um, but let's just use the example of water. Maybe we could agree that water is H2O. Um, that was true even before we knew about chemistry. That was the definition of water before anybody knew anything about chemistry, before we knew about H2O. Back when Aristotle thought it... Do you see that he's furiously Googling something about water? <laughs> Is he? He's trying to remember <laughs> the name of the water? I don't know. He just immediately started typing. He's like, well, 
I gotta get him on this water one. I can't even agree to the water being H two O. I love that this completely taps into that Jordan Peterson Sam Harris debate over truth because it really is. It is it is metaphorical truth versus factual scientific truth. And I mean, if you are a pragmatist, you kind of have to accept that metaphorical truth is going to be more useful in building strong and healthy societies and mm -hmm. and factual truth probably less so but people still i mean I, I don't know if we'll get to it he makes a, a brilliant point in the end of the i think it's closer to the end of the debate where he says you know even if something even if, if you know scientists were trying to discover something that they knew was dangerous, they would probably still want to discover it just to know it, <laughs> just to, just to know what is true. And I, ha I mean, I have that feeling I'm team truth all the way. I want right. to know what's what reality well, I mean, is. That's part of, I mean, that's the whole thing with like splitting the atom, right? Yes. You know, they, yeah. But it, but it was a double edge because not only they create nukes, but they also created nuclear power, which could end up, you know, saving the planet. Yeah. And also nukes, uh, hopefully will end up not destroying all life on the planet, but will end up actually preventing more wars than they, <laughs> you know, but he, he so. makes the, there's the, and this is, this goes back to the, can you really serve two masters thing? Can you serve the master of, I only want to do what's good for society and the master of, I want to know what's true you can't at the no. same time. And I, yeah, you, you can't, no. you, you have to pick one or the other. No. Well, you, yeah. Well, the problem is that, and this is why I hate critical theories. Uh, you know, we have to adhere to the fact that there are facts about the universe that are, that have nothing to do with morality. And then, you know, you as a society can use them in for positive or negative ways. And that's just, that's just reality. You can't hide the truth from people because you're afraid it will make them, you know, uh, do something bad essentially. Right. It is trickier though to construct motivating ideologies that, that really, you know, motivate people and, and I don't think don't so. Create I, I think nihilism without, I, I think, I think you can, I, I think you definitely 100% can. So really? Yeah. I, I don't Water know. Water was just an element. Nevertheless, it was this H2O. True. I'm sorry? This isn't so, true. That water has not always been H2O? Yeah. All you have to do is cross the Mexican border. And over there, it's aqua. <laughs> <laughs> Look at his face. Look at his face. Look at his face. He has the face of son. Um, I can't believe you've just <laughs> said the dumbest thing ever. He has that look like when your kid thinks, oh, they're going to tell you something really smart and it turns out to be the dumbest thing you've ever heard. No. Oh, my God. Uh, this is, Did you uh, know in Mexico they, they have a different language and they use different words for water? Did you know that? Destroy. Vosh is, Vosh is incapable of feeling embarrassment, isn't he? He's like, um, did you ever see the episode of Community where... Uh, Britta is like, she's like so madly in love with this Carney. No, but you've talked and, about it before. And uh, so Jeff goes to the carnival and, and he's like trying to figure out like what to do with this Carney. And this Carney is like just working at the gun stand and he's just completely like blank face and everything. And he realizes that, well, then the Carney eventually tells him. The reason Britta liked him so much is because he suffered brain damage that destroyed his ability to feel shame. Right. <laughs> so, Confidence. Right. So he's just, he doesn't care about anything and he just never feels bad about doing anything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, does this. Well, there you go. I mean, confidence is an aesthetic. Yes. But saying stupid shit sooner or later has to catch up with you right i mean even if you say stupid shit confidently i mean you know can this go on forever is i don't this, know i don't know is this an inexhaustible y you and you and destiny seem to be making the argument that vosh is bleeding subs i'm not sure i buy it but uh 
Really? Oh, I didn't know Destiny was making that argument. Plus, he made it when we were talking to him. Oh, okay. And, um, oh, you're we'll right. See. He did. Yeah. 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 I, I, we'll see. I mean, sooner. I guess you're. I guess most people. Most people are below average intelligence by. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> descriptively, right? Uh, no. It's I mean, the average is. Right. Oh yeah. Well, and right. also, it, also that wouldn't like the amount, the type of people that consume political content on the internet would obviously be smarter. The, yeah, would be. You'd think the higher range of things generally. Okay, right. so that's good. That's a point in our favor for Bosch right. losing subs. All right, let's see his. Right. Let's see his brill. I sitch. I'm with. I'm with Doctor Tom here. I mean, I think H two O was H two O. You know, <laughs> since the first. Star went supernova and, and created right. heavier elements, right. right? Well, this is what you said. You said Vosh is confusing uh, the symbol for something with the thing itself. Right, yeah. Yeah. I'm able to distinguish between... I Didn't we create symbols right. because it was easier than always like, having the object around? Like Vosh walks up to like a restroom and he, you know how it has like the little man and woman figurine? <laughs> he He's says, like, Hello. somebody has to let these poor people, they're out of here. They're trapped in the wall. How dare you enslave them here for your signage? It's like, Vosh, uh, it's, it's a picture. Okay. <laughs> it's, a picture. It, right? it's a picture, you moron. But he's, maybe this is why Vosh was hearkening to like past societies. He, he, he like some primitive uh, cultures, thought that the photograph did in fact steal your soul oh yeah that, if Vosh is thirsty he just sits down and writes out the word agua and then drinks it <laughs> i can just, just drink the, <laughs> drink the concept Vosh, i don't understand why anyone goes hungry or thirsty in america right. when they could just go to kinko's and print out a picture of water and food and just... <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> yeah come on Vosh. That's H2O, not water. Aqua means water. Aqua is water. It's a when different they, term. Uh, actually, it's agua. It's not aqua, right? And we're referring <laughs> to terms and definitions. He's like, you didn't even get the pronunciation right, dumb fuck. Yes, yeah. It's here. No, I'm referring to water, the stuff that fills lakes and rivers. I'm the not stuff talking that fills, about the word one. Many things fill lakes and rivers. Yes, <laughs> so that completely destroys his argument you're right vosh because there are fish and turtles in lakes and rivers it completely <laughs> annihilates the argument that water was here uh, since the beginning of time this is look at dr tom's face he knows he's talking to some fucking i know bad faith actor there are many things in waters and rivers you've got to understand <laughs> dr tom don't try to fool me with your magic words okay Okay. Um, do you honestly Things, not know what I mean when I talk about water? Or are you just I, being a little difficult? I think you... you are you just being a little difficult? Yeah. Look at him. Yeah. Listen, little bitch. <laughs> We're having a conversation here. Knock it off with the sophistry. Yes. You made a mistake before you began that argument, which is that you... Look, and then he comes out and he says, you made the mistake, motherfucker. Right. Well, let's see. It's it's very. This is a very interesting response because this is basically Vosh admitting that there's just some tactical decision devoid of what is actually being discussed. He says you made a mistake. Right. It's like well, we're trying to have a conversation. Like, what do you? Or I guess that is a technical debate. So you said just because people didn't always know something doesn't mean that it can't be true. But that can't be the case when we're talking about definitions. Things that are true have constructed premises that lead necessarily to an, an outcome, a resolution. But a definition is something applied presuppositionally. You can say, for example... Wait, I don't know what the fuck he... You know what he just said? <laughs> I'm totally lost. He's, he's, say, he's saying Which that... Is that a def he's basically saying that a definition is something that we make up like something is the thing because I, of no, the definition I, I understand. Well, okay, yeah. right. you said just because people didn't always know something doesn't mean that it can't be true but that can't be the case when we're talking about definitions things that are true have constructed premises that lead necessarily to an an outcome a resolution things that are true 
have constructed premises right. that lead to an outcome. So, but he's talking about facts there. He's not talking about definitions. Now he's going to talk about definitions. Things that are he's, true. Right. He's talking about, yeah, <laughs> true statements. Yeah. Okay. It's he's se he's separating saying. those from definitions. But <laughs> right, right. I, I mean, there's that. overlap, obviously. I mean, as soon as something, I mean, truth itself is a category. False is sure. a category. Sure. But a definition is something up applied presuppositionally. You can say, for example, that the light, the, the spectrum of light that we see, the visible spectrum of light, is something that exists outside of our perception. And that is certainly true. But how we perceive it is not existentially correct. And what's more, the definition between red, orange, and yellow is not something that you can find proven uh, anywhere uh, in the real world. We have to arrive at arbitrary distinctions. Um, so that's-, can, that's can I just ask you about water again? Do you, you do you not think water is H two O? But I think we've come up with a term to describe what we refer to as water. There yeah, are of I'm course not, other I, cultures. I, that I agree with you. We came up with a term to talk about water. And that term right. is water, and we came up with terms <laughs> to talk about hydrogen and oxygen. Um, but what's here? Here's a sentence: Water is H two O. You know what those terms mean. Now think about what idea is expressed by the words. What's the thought that's expressed? We could express it in many different languages. Now think about the thought that's expressed by that sentence. Look, he's so cool. This guy is like the picture of cool. Sit back. Let's think about this, this right. concept here. The idea, imagine it in your head, Vosh. And Vosh is like, hmm, let me check my Twitter. That's true, isn't it? The thought that is expressed by the sentences. Water is H2O. This is, well, this is a really good response because he... He cut through all, all the nonsense. Basically. He did, yeah. He just like ignored it all. And he just, stripped like, okay. all that sophistry right. away. He's like, let's just talk right. about the concept here. I, I, could, I don't know if I could have this conversation. I just lose my mind. I know. <laughs> Jesus Christ. What do you think? And it was long before we got here, long before humans got here. Water has always been H2O. Well, ice, of course, is also H2O. No! No! Fuck you! <laughs> oh god it's so infuriating it's I so know. infuriating i he, know he just won't answer the fucking goddamn but this question. is this is remember i'm so happy i started using this term this is first year college student uh logic okay it's like oh i'm a first year college student i learned i can just deconstruct everything right i win right. arguments like that's all it is this that's is all it is no you're wrong what about ice yeah yeah <laughs> it's like okay Congratulations, okay. you're an idiot. <laughs> well, but water is it what is, we define it as within a given, you know, state. Ice is also water. It's not liquid water. Yeah, but colloquially, water. people refer to ice as ice and water as water. Yes. And whether or not they're going to use either of those definitions is going to come down to context. And what about heavy? So, so Vosh is basically taking a position that he, you can't really, like the knowledge only exists in the way that we define it which is that is kind of the critical theory position and that's the problem with critical theory yeah. because you can't have any sort of dialogue between philosophies or ideologies well so so Vosch's position is all categories are arbitrary right and yes. constructed and therefore i'm rooting my definitions and categories not on on real facts but on care harm well no uh, on foundation yeah and on power is usually the way they do it in critical theory like whoever creates right. the language has the well yeah the but that's more power. like that's more like the like that's the the realistic like the victor writes the history basically right. yeah yeah they're not saying that morally it should be based on power they're saying that's what happens but vosh is saying because everything's arbitrary i get to just define it based on what i think is is harmful or care harm Right. Water to H2O or deuterium oxide, which is referred to as water and is in fact a type of water, an isotope, uh, but is not in fact H2O. There's an extra hydrogen atom holding on there, making the sub. <laughs> the expressions he makes are so, so funny. Ah, debating. I wonder, an idiot. I wonder if the only way to really deconstruct this terrible argument is to is to look at the premise see if Vosh's premise even makes any sense like right. there's got to 
well, the premise of like, he's obviously not defining everything based on harm, right? Like he doesn't, I'm assuming Vosh doesn't think that, you know, hmm. black people can identify as white and white people can identify as black. Right. I mean, wouldn't that be harm? Wouldn't it be beneficial if we deconstructed these, yeah, these racial categories? Well, and not, it's just like some defining things in one way harms one group over another. <laughs> Well, so that's I why mean, it's yeah, that's why yeah. it's stupid. But. Yeah, you can't you can't make a definition that doesn't put somebody at harm, right? Obviously. Well, I mean, why should we call anyone, you know, why should we call anyone stupid? Why should we call anyone having an intellectual disability? Why should we say anyone has a disability whatsoever? Like, in the society where all definitions are not based off of something that's tangible and real, but instead based on what causes harm, like I, that society would look so foreign, and alien to us. I don't True. even think it'd be possible to exist within it. I mean, how could you say someone failed to do anything? You know, by acknowledging someone's failure, aren't you harming them? Like, it's just, this is just like a dystopian, you know, uh, Borgeron or whatever that story is called, nightmare world. <laughs> yeah, no. Are we harming? Dense. Mm -hmm. So if this is taking me back to chemistry class, but um, did you say deuterium? Is that right? Is that heavy water? Yes. If that's a, just an isotope, is it an isotope of oxygen that makes that? If that's an isotope, it's still oxygen and it's still H2O. And that is still H2O. That's still it water. Is that's what a different chemical water. compound than water. Certainly. But it's a different chemical compound. You have to acknowledge he, my stupid argument. He's making, but, but Vash is unintentionally making... Um, making an argument against his case because then you could say okay yeah but it's called heavy water right mm -hmm. it's there's a, it's a a modifier added to the term it's called heavy water okay so that's what we're saying that trans women <laughs> the trans women you're just adding a modifier to the term woman yeah only if people refer to it as a different type of thing not water but let's say they yeah i guess he is doing that's exactly what trans woman is, a different type of thing. It was the term waterium. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Scientists come up with wacky names. If they wanted to come up with a term like that to describe it, they would have a significant taxonomical distinction to refer to, a different molecular composition. But we refer to it as water. You might say it's trans water. A bit of a oh, difference, shit. but fundamentally very similar. Okay. So you're resisting me on the claim that water is H2O. Um, let me try a different one. How I'm about, resisting you on definitional prescriptivism. I think that we have... Uh, I'm not I prescribing think that, any definitions. I'm just saying water is H2O, true or false. And it sounds like you're reluctant to say true. No, so I, no I, I agree. I, I agree Wait, that water... In, he said, if, if Vosh is saying that all def definitions are inherently prescriptive, how can he fight him on definitional prescriptivism? I don't even not, know what definitional prescriptivism is. I don't either, but I'm saying if he if he's coming from this perception that all definitions are prescriptive, then he can't fight anyone on it because he's just saying that's just the reality of the situation. Definitional prescriptivism. I think he just made that term up, but Pers definition and exam well the prescriptivism is a thing. Yeah, I know. I don't but... know that there's definitional prescriptivism. Yeah. He's just, well, first of all, so they're, they are definitely having two conversations here about, you know, re, one ver, reality versus, I don't know, what is Vosh arguing? Oh, wait, here we go. Prescriptivism. The belief, so I don't know why I said definitional, the belief that there are correct and wrong ways to use language and that books about language should give rules to follow rather than describing how language is really used. That kind of destroys Vosh's argument because that's not even what he's saying. Well, but I mean, isn't prescriptivism kind of a, a thing anyway? Don't you say like this is how you use a period? This is how you use an exclamation point? Like it is somewhat prescriptive, right? No, yeah, like grammatical rules would be prescriptive, right? But in the definition I just read, it said. It said language should be, it said books about language should give rules to follow rather than describing how language is really used. So for example, like addiction, like if you had a prescriptivism approach, you would say dictionaries should never use the word woke because the word woke is grammatically incorrect. Mm -hmm. 
But then the people that write the dictionary say, well, we're just describing how the language is used. We're not making a prescription about the correct usage of it. But, yep. but Vosh is taking that idea about prescriptivism and he's turning it to something that has nothing to do with what, like the argument about rules and grammar. He's talking about like, uh, he's adding like a moral element to categorical, to all categorical distinctions and all words, definitional, just by having the definition. Like, which is not what, according to this anyway, that's not what prescriptivism has anything to do with. Yeah, I don't know. what. And thankfully... I'm I'm so curious what he means that I would completely go down that rabbit hole, but right. Thankfully, Doctor Tom is not going to do that. <laughs> Doctor Tom is going to like stick to this. Yes, you can't even say water is H two O. Dumb fuck. Well, I have a feeling that basically there's this thing about uh, linguistic prescriptivism that means something very specific and Vosh has sort of broadened it out and is using it incorrectly to mean all this other stuff. Right. It's because it helps him in the debate. Yeah. We, we refer to H2O as water colloquially. Yeah, of course I'm, I'm fine. So with water that. is H2O and it was H2O long before humans came along. See, they're, they're a little bit talking past one another because Vosh is saying we refer to it that way. And he's dodging the question on whether or not that is a true statement. Whether or not yes. we know enough about chemistry to know that, you know, about oxygen and hydrogen and how water combines to make, how oxygen and hydrogen combine to make water. He's dodging right. that. Right, right. He's saying, yeah, we call it that, but. That's not really talking past each other. That's intentionally dodging. So. What's that? That's not really talking past. That's intentionally dodging. changing okay, the you're subject. Right. Yeah. It, we we refer to H two O as water colloquially. Yeah, of course. I'm, I'm colloquially, water is H two O, and it was H two O long before humans came along. Another water example wasn't a concept back then. I know, but nevertheless, water was there. Actually, water's never been a concept. Um, water's always been a molecule. <laughs> <laughs> so good. It's so good. Look at Bosch. What? Concepts and, and molecules are different. <laughs> um, we have a concept of water, but the concept is not itself water. Um, but our understanding of it and the differentiations that we make when we distinguish it from things like heavy water, these are socially constructed. <sighs> After all, you just said it's still fundamentally water. This is so fucking no, weird. you're so no, they're different things. We just come up with different terms for them. This is so fucking stupid. I know it's not, you, we don't. We don't socially construct, oh, I think we need five different types of water. Let's think up some different ways that would be fun for water to exist. No. And then those, and then those types of water spring into existence yes, based you, on our You fucking dumbass. Yeah. Yeah. We start a nuclear program and we discover, oh, look, this water actually has an extra, whatever it is, like an extra neutron or something. I don't know how heavy water works. Yeah, whatever it is. Yeah. yeah. This water's actually a little bit different than the water that we've been studying. <laughs> Maybe it should have a new category, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. But we're talking about a different molecular shape. Now, that's because you've arbitrarily branched these two within a category. Arbitrarily. It's not arbitrary. It's he not arbitrary. Word, does he not know what the word arbitrary? He uses this word all the time. It's not arbitrary at all. No. Yeah. Right. Arbitrary means like random yeah or category you know based i like if you look superfluous it up, it says based on personal whim <laughs> oh there you go yes right it wasn't based on personal whim no. reality for, there was a fork in the road reality went two different ways yes and we said well if we want to track reality i guess we better come up with another category here right because there's a relationship between them. But that's a social phenomenon. The universe doesn't give a shit whether you refer to heavy water as water or some other, you know, molecule entirely. It's utterly indifferent to your perception of reality. But we still choose to prescribe. And that, I think, make any a lot of people, when it comes said. down to definitional games, you know, they start doing this, well, these things are these things. And, you know, we have a lot of power over that. Some animals are different species but we distinguish what makes something a different species the taxonomy for what 
it refers to species differentiation. We made D- doesn't that up. the fact that that's not true. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna say like doesn't the fact that the universe through natural processes has constructed a difference between water and heavy water I mean it does give a shit, right? Like, sure. I don't know how you can say it doesn't give a shit. I don't know what he means by that. Well, like, and- yeah, the, the universe and well, I guess, and we're part of the universe, so we created a mouth sound. <laughs> like, I don't know what does that even mean. Well, and we, I mean, we try, we, we determine the category of species based on a list of criteria that yes. seems, you know, parsimonious to how reality is. I mean, we well, could. Well, that's why I said he, he, he's making this, the problem is he's not, he doesn't know or he's hiding behind that there's this difference between hard social constructs and soft social constructs. Right, Yeah. That split. The sophistry. We didn't. We, we, we invented it. We didn't discover it. Yeah. So I agree with you that species are, um, the distinction between species is less clear than distinctions we would find in physics and chemistry. So that's why, um, no surprise, I'm focusing on physics and chemistry. How do we feel about the claim that gold is atomic number 79? Do you, would you agree with that? Or are you skeptical of that too? I, I think that's how we refer to it as, sure. Uh, I'll take that's, your word for it. I don't have the the the, the uh, periodic table memorized. Yeah. Well, um, I'm benefiting from the fact that this is a bit of a commonly used uh, philosophical example. So that's really why I know that. Um, but yeah, gold, that term in English refers to um, a certain element that has 79 protons. It's atomic number 79. So gold has been around for a long time, long before the word gold came on the scene. Gold, cold, gold predates the word gold. So anyway, this is just supposed to be an example of a definition that's true, and we went down a rabbit hole a little bit. What do you mean by true? If, if we had <laughs> taken another definition, if we had created another definition to say gold, yeah. and the term gold referred to a collection of, uh, of elements, so let's say gold and lead, and the term gold was something people used to refer to both, that definition would be as true as the one we use today for gold. They would have simply made the choice to include two different elements in their definition, just as you've included standard water and the isotope. Guys, what if, follow me on this, what if the word gold and the word metal were reversed? Yeah. Oh my God. Who cares? Did I just blow your mind? No, you didn't. No, you didn't <laughs> even come close to blowing my mind. <laughs> There's not enough weed in the world for that to be fucking interesting. What if we called all metals gold and we only called gold metal? <gasps> that would be stupid. <laughs> guys, guys, guys. What if we called all soda Coke? Right. And we called Coke soda. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, this is so silly. Do you think Vosh knows that he's arguing the Jordan Peterson position in the Jordan Peterson Sam Harris debate? <laughs> That's funny. I don't know, actually. I don't I don't think he does know that. Yeah. Well that means what you that depends upon how you define the word true. Exactly. I wonder how he would feel if you're like, you know you're you're agreeing with Jordan Peterson right now, right? <laughs> yeah, it, big time. <laughs> Remember, so many people clip that out. Well, that depends upon how you define the word true. <laughs> they were like, Bosch oh, got him. That. Yeah. Well, he's basically doing the same thing here. Yes. Jordan yes. Peterson at least had a, a good reason to do it. Vashta has no, like, the only reason he's doing it is so he doesn't accidentally say the forbidden words and commit a blasphemy. Mm-hmm. Well, this is why I didn't, I didn't side with Jordan Peterson in that conversation. Either. Yeah. Yes. I understood what his position was, and I think it's valid, but I still think you need, obviously, you need to have a word that means objective truth Sam, that everyone understands. Sam Her- or Brett Weinstein said it best mm-hmm. that scientific, sci- science is the ideology that is the the arbiter between all the other ideologies. It's like the super ideology. Right. Because it's the ideology that explains all the other ideologies. Which was, I know time, people lose mm-hmm. their shit over that, especially if you're in, especially if you're uh, not a materialist. Go ahead. Right, exactly. Uh, what time uh, was Charlotte going to come? 
three o'clock. We got twenty minutes. What do you want me oh, to send? Okay. Do you want me to send the link now or you want no, to no, no. bug I just, out? Go a little bit further. I thought I thought I thought you said it was now. No. I didn't realize. Okay. We got twenty minutes. We got twenty minutes, good. Yeah. The tope of heavy water in the definition of water. It's just a definitional game. As long as they distinguish between the two subcategories of gold and iron with their respective mm -hmm. atomic weights, the singular term, like how we have terms for metals, uh, we have terms for uh, for for the, um, the, uh, the the gases, the inert gases. Help me out. You know more than me. The um, talk about the noble gases. The noble gases. Yes, we invented those distinctions. We, we invented saw the terms. The terms. Yes. Because the distinctions are only meaningful. When we notice them, the universe. No, doesn't... what a dumbass. He said the universe doesn't care. What the fuck is he talking about? That's what, of course the universe cares. That's why these things are different. If the yeah. universe didn't care, then reality couldn't function or form. What the fuck is he talking about? Yeah, yeah. It's, we're drifting into like complete no man's land here. Yeah. Like reality doesn't even exist. Yes. Yeah care whether or not we think there's something meaningful or significant about noble okay. gases there is something meaningful and significant right like there's a whole different number of protons <laughs> it's a pretty significant difference right if you add a proton you've actually changed the mo the the that atom element. yeah yeah versus the other stuff but we there just is saw a, those differences and there is like, a different oh, oh. So we saw the differences. The differences were there. The differences are real. And then we came along and decided, you know what? We're going to name these differences. We're going to assign some names to these different um, elements. Agreed. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm, I'm trying to remember why, why we started down this rabbit hole. Um, I didn't get very far through the things you said. Oh, is I just the first thing I brought up was you had said all these views are incoherent. Um, but then we kind of clarified that what you meant was um, any any of the popular views of women that have been proposed are vague and difficult to articulate. And then I guess I was just trying to point out that um, a definition might exist and be true even if it hasn't been articulated. Um, so fa like rewind before humans came on the scene, I would have thought water was H2O even before anyone was around to name water or to realize its chemical essence. Um, so I was just disagreeing with that point about um, how definitions work. I don't think definitions um, properly understood are linguistic entities. I think there are facts out there in the world. But there anyway, are facts, um, but are, whoa, 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 wait, I have to challenge that. There are facts in the world, but definitions are categorically linguistic. We create them because we identify differences yeah. in things that we see in the world. The facts of the world, there are many, the, the, the spectrum of light that we consider. Wait a minute. Oh, no, are are linguistic the entities. I think there are facts out there in the world. But there anyway, are facts, um, but are, whoa, 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 wait, I have to challenge that. There are facts in the world, but definitions are categorically linguistic. We create them because we identify differences yeah. in things that we see in the world. Did he just concede the argument? Did he? I don't know. He just said, listen. But are, whoa, 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 wait, I have to challenge that. There are facts in the world, but definitions are categorically linguistic. We create them because we identify differences yeah. in things that we see in the world. So he said there are facts in the world and that we create definitions based on differences we see in the world. Right, yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> That's what he was arguing against a second ago. Yeah. yeah, good yes, catch. Thank you, Flash. So you do understand. You do have the, the mind of a, at least a three-year-old that can understand the difference between a door and a chair, okay? <laughs> right, yeah. The facts of the world, there are many, the, the spectrum of light that we consider to be blue contains within it an infinite range of potential blue values, but we don't have an infinite number of names to describe them. There may be a set number of facts in the world, but the categories we use to separate those facts are entirely up to us and our perceptions. So yeah. another example of this for it would be like in terms of gender prescription, <laughs> there are cultures historically that have had third genders for a long time. Often the third gender is a biologically male uh, a, a gender class that adopts roles that are much more similar to the biologically female. There are non-human animals that do this as well. You know, it's, it's, not, it's not unique to us. Um, First of all, I don't think that's remotely true that there's yeah. non-human animals that create <clears throat> social constructions of third genders. Okay? Yeah. And even in these what would cultures, be the purpose of that? Well, that how could like how could an animal construct the social construction of a third gender? Right. Yeah. Even like you know, I don't even know what he's fucking referring to. There are animals that 
have intersex characteristics or able to change sexes or something, but I, mean, I don't know what he's talking about with this, but even with, you know, in human history, when there was this quote unquote third gender, they didn't view it as a gender. Again, they viewed it as like a sex because they didn't make a distinction. Right. They're like, you're a third type of person, essentially. Right. They, would, they were doing the same thing. They were like, oh, reality forked on us here. We don't quite know how to explain it. Right. Let's just and come up with a new category. And almost all of these third, you know, sex uh, types that other like older societies created were not always, but often disparaging against, you know, gay men generally. Right. They'd be like, oh, you're an effeminate man, so you must not be a man. <laughs> Which right. I don't think Flash would ever, you know, would be in favor of that, but okay. And in that case, there's, there's a separate category. And maybe they felt, clearly they felt, that the categorical difference between these more feminized biological males and the regular biological males was something worth distinguishing in a, in a gender-oriented taxonomical sense. But that's not any more right or wrong than what we do. They just see different meaningful differences and apply different terms. So you can't make these objective arguments about terms. Terms may refer to the facts of the world, but we draw the borders. The land on earth might be, uh, uh, you know, um, objective, but the borders for, of the nations that we build over them, those we rule on on paper. We just have to be, you know, considerate of human need when we're describing what here we actually want to build. Yeah. Okay, gosh, there is a... <laughs> There's a lot I disagree with in there, but I'm trying to be um, trying to be selective or efficient with our time here. Um, maybe let me just ask you this. Um, it sounded like in your response to me, you raised some objections to um, the biological view that I expressed that women are adult human females. And you brought up, um, well, you thought you said, you know, we haven't always known about chromosomes. Again, I don't think that chromosomes figure into the definition of biological sex. You also mentioned intersex people. So it sounded like you were trying to argue against the, the reality of males and females. But then at other times, you say, you know, there are other cultures that have a third gender that are biologically male. And I think you might agree that there are animals that are biologically male and biologically female. So I guess just let me let me get clear on your view. Do you think that there are males and females of course. out there in the world? I believe it's bimodal. There are males and females, and okay. most people will fall pretty solidly on either end of the spectrum. But I do okay. feel there are a significant number of people who are closer to the middle in terms of intersex expression. Oh, well, if you also think that there are adults in humans then um, what exactly is wrong with the definition that women, women are adult human females? You believe in adults, you believe in humans, and you believe in females. So there's something that I don't think Dr. Tom hones in on, which he just, I think, exposed the weakest part of Asha's argument. What's that? And it's that the same, all the same arguments that Vash is using to say gen, you know, for gender apply to sex. Really? Yeah. How could they not? Everything he's saying about gender applies to sex. So you say, well, then why are you saying that? Why are you like, and this, this came up in the Dr. Deborah So conversation, you know, when Vosh says, oh, sex is biological and gender is a social construct. And then she said, do you have evidence that gender is a social construct? And then instead of actually providing evidence, he fell back on the, this argument. All categories are social constructs. Right. It's like, yeah. okay, but you said that there's a difference between sex and gender. And you didn't say sex was a social construct. So that means that you're lying or you're just some sort of trickery going on here because under your definition, sex is also a social construct that's just entirely arbitrary. So right. you're so you are saying that there's no difference between sex and gender. Right. If they're both social constructs. Right. Right. And I think that's the, the key point to why all this stuff crumbles away. Right. Yeah, there are a lot of people that really, they're offended by the idea of separating sex and gender. Like they think sex and gender should be unified. I'm more open to, there is some utility in separating gender roles and biological sex and if you want to call gender roles gender and biological sex sex then i think that could be mm -hmm. an efficient distinction in the same way that you know some other well here's the problem 
I don't disagree with you in theory. Right. That the term gender has utility as as having a term that means uh, things related to men and women that are not generally biological. Right. Yeah. I ha- they're like that makes sense. Socially constructed behavior. Right. The problem with that. There's two problems with that. The first is that, and we've talked about this, that's not how anyone uses the term gender except for like specific fields of academia. Right. Well, the fields of academia are the only place where it's valuable because it's only valuable in terms of study. Well, no, because Vosh is talking about, he thinks this should be the way the language is thought of colloquially. Well, Vosh is a moron right. that we just can yeah. dismiss out of hand. But. Yeah. That's not like the way that people use gender, the average person uses gender is the way the the APA, the they psychiatric use it as APA uses fashion, yes. basically. Well, no, they use it as basically anything about a man or woman that does not directly refer to your genitals right. as gender. That's so um, ridiculous. But that's kind of the way people use it. And I wouldn't have a problem with the way of having gender and sex be this clear distinction between biology and pure social constructs. Mm-hmm. If my problem with it is that almost every single person that argues this refuses to acknowledge that there are biological sex differences between men and women uh, behaviorally and cognitively. Right. And so we would first have to have society start talking about and normalizing the idea of behavioral and cognitive sex differences and use that term sex differences yeah. if you want to use this sort of gender distinction. Yeah, that, that would be useful. That would be helpful, definitely. Well, I, I think, you know, just as this debate goes, just in terms of like the Lincoln beard contest, Vosh is definitely the loser here. <laughs> I think Dr. Doctor Tom comes in a close second, but mm-hmm. James just fucking takes it away here. He looks like well, Abraham fucking Lincoln. You're right. Well, it's not just the beard. He's got like the head shape. The fa- yeah, I know. The face. James. I know. I never realized how much I, of, of Lincoln James uh, embodies. I have a whole new respect for you, James. I mean, I feel like. You should I get look, a hat. The big hat. I look at you and I think, man, that guy freed the slaves. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I think. <laughs> there you go. For right. all we know, James is the reincarnation of Abraham. Lincoln. It looks okay. good. It looks great. Oh God! Don't shave that beard off, man. It looks awesome. <laughs> so maybe, maybe we should, maybe we should wrap it up because yeah, we should. We should send a link to our guests. But yeah. any, any closing thoughts on this walk through um, sophistry lane? <laughs> no, I think I said. I think I said all to say about it. I mean, we'll watch the whole uh, debate. Some. I don't think we're not going to clip this. How about this? We're not going to clip this. No, we are going to clip this. We're no, definitely no, no, going to no, clip no. this. No, no, why? no, 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 no. Hold on. I didn't, no. I didn't do this not to clip it. Like, Wait why? Why because would we Because then what's the point this? of us doing the whole debate later? Well, you're the one that says you want to do the whole debate. I don't necessarily know that we need to do the whole we debate. We have to do this whole debate later. Well, we can do it. We can do both. There's no reason no. why we can't. No, listen. listen. I can't. Listen. Listen. This is topical now. The whole listen. reason to do this, this is This is topical to forever. It doesn't matter. The stream's not ending, but um, we're just going to be talking to someone. Um, no, we're bringing. We have two guests lined up, but right. let's argue. Let's um, argue about this. We'll argue about this later. Later, okay. yeah, exactly. Right. Um, so, final thoughts? Nothing. Okay. No, nope, nothing. Excellent. Walk through sophistry lane here. Hi, you just listened to a clip from the Sitch and Adams show. If you like what you heard, you can listen to our live show right here on this channel on Sunday, starting at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern. And if you want, you can super chat us. We read $20 and up super chats on the show and then do a follow-up stream on the following Tuesday where we read the rest of the unread super chats and interact with fans of the show. Subscribe to this channel right here to listen to the live show or to listen to more of our awesome clips.